is not a question of what things are. It is a question of how I learn. It is a question of when I can say something. And as we become confident of that, we, we stop being these outside observers, we, we stop being these controllers, and we start swimming in something which floats. And flows, not flows. So these conferences and meetings like this, each time regurgitate stuff. And next time, the next conference, it will be possible to say different things. So there is an undesirable present. How can what let present transform itself into a more desirable? There is always the idea of radical change. The radical change takes place in the mind. Sing it. The problem is that we're still in this Shannon information age, which imprisons us in the past, because as those of us who understand Shannon, some extremely well, but I think all of us do, that Shannon messaging means that you're going to send me something that I can already expect. And all I have to do is figure out, did you mean this or that? That or that or that or that or that or that. But the Shannon model doesn't allow me to understand how I can know something new. And because all of the technology we're making, we're making, I claim, is based on the Shannon model, messages that are expected, we are essentially screwing ourselves. So I envision a new kind of technology, a technology which helps us reach insights, not which helps us send messages. Sing it. Academia should be a, a place where we all come together and s have a serious discussion about the world we want to make. The late Amos Wilson said, if we desire a better world, we must name the world we desire. Desires. I was thinking that perhaps we should reflect on the nature of our problem. Problems are always conflicts of desires. Desires. I desire peace as a need. Needs are conditions that have to be met so that they can happen again. There are one description of life. One, not the only one, but one description of life is that needs be met so that they happen again. If I could have peace sorted into the table of content the title needs, it would give us a different English language. We would understand, for instance, that we need peace. And since we need peace, we have to meet it with our conflicts. We have to meet it with our differences. So we would know there is peace mm -hmm. in solving this conflict. Yes. <laughs> but that is what I mean with the loud speaking. We are well. Yes, if I could tell you, come, let's have it out, then we would know that that Then we would know we were in be peace. Very peace. Together. Yes. Because we can only argue with each other when, when, when we are. Otherwise, we would have that to is what talk. I want. Every eye not only needs peace, but wants peace. So, asynchronicity is an invitation for generating newness through conversations that turns objects into rhythms, provocative conversations. Provocative conversations. Hmm. I claim that the biology of love is central because I claim that love is the emotion that constitutes the social. There is a fundamental difference in the course of human relations depending on the emotion under which it takes place. And the explanation of that phenomenon has to do with the possible history of recurrent interactions under which these systems drift together in coexistence if they enter in recurrent interaction without destroying each other. If I want to live in relations that bring forth the legitimization of another, in coexistence with myself. And want and need an honest language, then maybe the biology of love is an emotion that will invite a new honest language. 
we learn more about each other, you and I, and I of you. We learn how we not only agree about the nature of a couple of somewhat different oriented video cameras, but we also learn how we disagree. And in so doing, we learn about each other. People listen for understanding rather than agreement. So conflict is an invitation to turn. If you take together. each end carefully, and I'll get out of the way. Oh. Mm. Where did that come How from? How would you undo that? How would I undo it? Yeah. Oh. I would take, an, I'd take a scissors and I would go... Other than that, without cutting it. Well, let's see. If she hands it back to me, it might get undone. It did. Brilliant. Brilliant. So we can exchange back and forth. Thank we can so have a conversation much. where we exchange exactly. nodding. You deal with the nod yeah, and through the conversation yeah. and going back and forth uh -huh. through the conversation the nod disappears. Maybe we're not doing uh, theory, but we're doing improv theater here, now. Maybe even some of us are not doing improv, but actually doing and acting based on the concepts of how the metaphors of cybernetics has affected my life and are performing daily life. Hopefully, in a way that might transform a conversation. Performance. Sharing your presence. Sharing your presence. Not the content, not the form, not the opinion. Just, I'm here. Sometimes it's done by looking at somebody. Conveying your thought and your attention. Not only one. Lou, thank you. Carrying your messages so that they reach out the way you want. Just one more question for now.